Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. I'll uh, take you now to Kogi State. Ahead of the November 11 governorship election, INEC conducted mock accreditation exercise to test run some of the devices that will be used and the processes just to ensure that everything is set ahead of the ele election, which will happen in Kogi by a and Imo set tonight. As we've been engaging the governorship candidates in Kogi State and in some other state, Bayasa and Imo State ahead of the election, I'm being joined by the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in Kogi State, Senator Dino Melaye. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for joining us tonight. Yeah, good evening, Shion, and um, good evening, Nigerians. How are you today? Very well. We thank yeah. God. We bless God. Um, so, you did you witness the uh, mock accreditation exercise over the weekend? Our uh, party representatives did. Do you think that INEC is ready? Um, only INEC can. From only, what you only INEC can answer that question. No, I'm from what as someone who you were one of those who opposed vehemently, and how INEC transmitted the result. Uh, at the presidential election, uh, which a lot of people, uh, it caused a stare at the collation center. But looking at what really happened on Saturday, you must have had an experience that will give you some sort of feeling of whether or not INEC is ready. From what you gathered from your supporters that monitored, what are your thoughts? Yeah, a mock presentation is not enough to assess um, the performance of INEC because there was mock performance in the 2023 elections, and you knew what happened afterwards. So um, for me, it's just um, that there's an opportunity for INEC to correct the mistakes, uh, deliberate mistakes of the last election, using the instrumentality of these three upcoming elections. So there's an opportunity for INEC to redeem our image. Do you think, uh, um, do you have trust in INEC for this election in Kogi State? Why will you ask that above question when um, we all knew what happened in the last election. So I'm just saying that my advice for INEC is that the Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo election is an opportunity for them to um, become born again. By being born again, you mean? Redeem their image. Okay. So are you ready for this election? Are you campaigning already? Already, yes. We are ready. We are waiting for the elections. It can be tomorrow. Are you ready? If Absolutely ready. If the elections were tomorrow, how do you think you will perform? My performance, if the election is tomorrow, is that in two days' time, you will be calling me governor-elect of Kogi State. Wow. You think that, I mean, your friend is no longer on the ballot. I mean, you've had uh, such an interesting... Who is my friend? The governor of your state. Uh, okay. You were in the same party. You were the one who raised his hand and you said, oh, this is a voice and hand of God at the time. But sometimes, I mean, at some point, you guys... Uh, uh, you parted ways, uh, and you guys have both had your issues. So um, you are up against the likes of Usman Ododo, against the likes of Lake Abejide, against the likes of uh, um, uh, I mean, there are a lot of them on the ballot. I mean, don't be, don't be, Sheo, don't be deceived that um, um, Yaya Bello is not on the ballot. Um, Ododo is physically on the ballot. But Yaya Bello is the one seeking third time through a proxy. But I would not want this debate to be about Yaya Bello. Rather, I want to market my political party and market what we have to offer the people of Kogi State. How do you hope to unseat a ruling APC in Kogi State? What it, makes you think your party has a chance? Because it has happened before. In 2003, the PDP unseats um, Abubakar Raudu in Kogi State. It's happened before. In 2019, I was... Um, a senatorial candidate of the PDP. Yaya Bilo was the governor of Kogi State, um, opposition party at the center. And um, I still won my election, and I was sworn in as senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In 2017, Yaya Bilo was a sitting governor when the first organized INEC recall in this country held, and I was even in incarceration. I was in detention. Two of my brothers were in Kujay prison. And that... Um, um, recall, filled woefully with just 5%. So we have the history of, of defeating Yaya Bello before today. We have the history of defeating APC in Kogi State before today. So it's not going to be anything new. And I can assure you that this election, the PDP will win. Let's talk about, uh, I'm going, I, I will go into your manifesto and agenda and what you have for the people of Kogi State. We understand that uh, some Kogi West elders uh, from your senatorial district had endorsed 
um, Honorable Leke Abejide of the ADC, and they have asked those of Okon Extraction who are on the ballot to simply just uh, coalesce <laughs> and for, join forces with Leke Abejide. Anyway, that is, the, that is not correct. And I want to tell you that the first endorsement that was done was done through assessments about three months ago by a group called the Kogi West and Central Leaders Forum. And we were, the three of us were assessed, and I was declared the, the choice of Kogi West and Central because um, after assessment, I came up with over about 80 something percent, Lake had about 60 something percent, and Brahm had about 40 something percent. A second assessment was done by our umbrella body, the Okun Development Association, ODA. Uh, ODA, where again, the result was released just about three, four days ago, where I came top and became the choice of ODA by that assessment. I had about 80-something percent. Again, Lakey had about 61 percent, and um, Brahma had about 4 percent. There's also OTT, the Okun Tick Tank, had their own um, assessments, and I also came top of that uh, Assessment, and I want to assure you that the people of Okun um, Extraction have already made up their minds on who to support. Politics um, Elementary Post 101 teaches you about the fact that politics is all about structures, and you cannot win elections without structures. And I want to assure you that in every ramification, the Okun people are exposed, the Okun people are educated, they will always present their best, and they will always go for their best. Senator. And I'm surprised that the um, supposed Kogi elders you are alluding to, for me, it's a fiction because some of these people you are talking about were the same people who endorsed um, Yaya Bilo in, two, in 2019 and say they are supporting him over any other person. And the truth of the matter is that I saw even the name, they used the name of <laughs> General David yeah. Jemi Benoit. Our father, who for some time now, um, respectfully has been a bit indisposed, <laughs> and, and I'm surprised that um, it, no meeting held. I've ne I didn't have any interaction with General David Jamie Benoit. He didn't. He was not available for any interview with me or discussion with me. He did not. Um, so to use a name of somebody like that for me, it's um, it's, it's, it's actually unfortunate. But the truth of the matter is that. Um, I am the choice of our people by the grace of the Almighty God. I have been going around, and you can see from um, every form. In fact, the three of us from Okun are eminently qualified. And Leki Abejide is my brother. Leki Abejide is a fantastic Nigerian, is a member of the House of Representatives. But there's a time and season for everything. And I want to assure you that Dino Milaye has got the three E's. And that is what makes me the choice of our people. That's uh, what made me the choice of Ogi State. And what are those E's? <laughs> Educated. Out of all the candidates from Okun Extraction and in Kogi State, I'm the most educated. I'm the most experienced. I'm the most exposed. And it's not debatable. I was a member of the House of Reps. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been voted twice as a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Leke Abejide, member of the House of Reps. I was in the House of Reps 17 years ago. And the governorship of Kogi State is not a learning curve. It's not a learning ground. It's a place where you need people who definitely must have managed human and material resources over the years. And I want to tell you that it is not, the Okun nation is not in this contest to contest. We are in it to win. But so it looks because, like a, the House is not, is not united. The, Okun, Okun people are not united. I can, I can tell you categorically that we are, we are majorly united. And I want to tell you that shortly before this election, it will become clearer. It's even clear now, you understand? But it will become, because it will if become clearer. Because if the likes of General ben, Jem Bemo, who is an undisputable leader of the Okun people, is said I, to I have want, endorsed... I want, I, want to, I want to beg you not to please verify... As, a, as, as an investigative journalist, please make serious verification before you can um, allude to. Was there a press conference? Was there a voice? Were there pictures? Were there photographs? You don't just sit down in the corridor of what, your comfort and concur a release and send it through one of the unpopular blogs. You understand? And, and, and sell it to, the, to, 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 to people. When you were endorsed, was it, was it, was it there was documentation. That is why recently, 
um, two, three days ago, even the reports by ODA, the reports by the, the not, I won't say a referee, but by the guy who coordinated, sorry, not the guy, he's one of our big uncles, who is a, law, a, a, a respected lawyer from Kaba, who coordinated the affair, his release, his official report was released with figures allocated to three of us, and three of us appeared before them. We were assessed. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. We were, we were all assessed. But the question tonight is not in debating um, who is better or who is not better. It's on how to salvage the people of Let, Kogi State let's get from, to, yeah. from, from, from the let's, um, unfortunate incident, we, I mean, the condition we find ourselves. Let's get to the real business of, of issue of governance. And I'd like to put this to you. We start with the issue of the economy. And in terms of industry and the potential that Kogi State has, we look at uh, Ajakuta Iron and Steel Complex. We look at Jakura Mabu, uh, the Valley Food, Mopa Okura Sawmill, Ida Ceramic Company, the Oil Palm Company, the Nigerian Iron Oil Manufacturing Company. All of these and the enormous um, natural resources that your state in the heart of the North Central, very close to Abuja, that is also very significant in terms of the advantage that it has over several other states of the Federation. For you seeking that office, economically speaking, all of this potential, how much of benefit do you think this potents? Anyway, I want to start by saying that, naturally speaking, as a people, we are too rich to be poor. We are just unfortunate that um, we've not been properly managed especially in the last seven years. Ogi states have over two dozens of mineral resources in commercial quantity. Unfortunately, only one out of these very strong um, resources have been exploited. That's the limestone. As I speak with you, we've got tantalite. We've got lithium. We have some percentage of um, uranium. We have granite, but not tapped. How do you hope to tap so, all of this? What I want to tell you is that to tap it, you need someone who have the capacity and capability to go into it and then commercialize the process to the benefit of our, of, of, of our state. For example, to move our IGR from the Komato state it is today. Last year, the IGR of Kogi State, by the um, revenue board of Kogi State, is 18 billion. Per annum. Per annum. That's to me is it's laughable. It's ridiculous. How the much, Commissioner uh, of Finance addressed what, the press conference and said they want to move it to 36 billion. They've not been able to. How to much can that. you take it to? Should you be governor? I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I don't, I, I'm, I'm coming. You don't even talk about where you are taking it to without discussing processes. There are fundamental problems. Our governor will run every month to Abuja for federal allocation. I, as governor, have no business coming to Abuja with the enormous resources in Kogi states. I speak, for example, in tapping into these resources, there are loose funds all over the world today begging for attention. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. I, because I'm a global citizen, because I have my connections, will make sure that we tap into these mineral resources, make it's viable, make it, I mean, uh, marketable to the whole world, and then improve our IGR without taxing poverty. What is happening today in Kogi is you go to small, small shops, begin to tax them, you are taxing poverty. We are going to improve our IGR through the instrumentality of these available mineral resources without taxing poverty. Apart from these mineral resources, Shew, Kogi states, is supposed to be a global tourist attraction. Apart from the confluence, the river where River Niger and Benue meet, apart from being a confluent state, our proximity to Abuja is an advantage. And as I speak to you, Kogi is a gateway to 12 other states in this country. We have not tapped into that resource. The water that we are surrounded with is a veritable resource. If you go to Miami, you go to the Miami Beach and have a marine cruise for four hours, 15 minutes. You pay some couple of dollars. 
You go to Dubai, you have a marine cruise, you pay about 500 dirhams. Do you know that the longest marine, I mean, cruise in the world is that of Miami, four hours, 15 minutes? Or do you know that from Lokoja to Onichabak is eight hours cruise? You can't find it anywhere in the world. All we need to do is for me to advertise on CNN channels, arise for one year and tell the whole world that the farthest, longest marine cruise in the world is in Nigeria and in Nigeria is in Lokoja. Get enabling environment, get infrastructure facilities. You will ask me where will I get the money from? I will tell you again that the world, I mean, there are loose funds all over the world that you can tap into. By borrowing? And, Is it you know, by you're, borrowing? You're not borrowing. There are a lot of PPPs. There are a lot of um, build, operate, and transfer. If you don't know, you don't know. And you are bringing these investors to come and invest in Kogi states. Understand? With all of on, these, Senator Miller, just for a moment, because yeah. uh, with all of these, how I can you take the IGR I, in the first year? I am telling you that as I speak, from our policy um, documents that we have developed for the economy of um, Kogi State, we can make sure that by the grace of the Almighty God, within one year, one, one year, 18 months in office, we can move the IGR of Kogi State to 100 billion. Really? From, from the past three 18 billion that we have now, without taxing poverty, Without impoverishing the people. What would be for your example, strongest, what would be your, just for a moment, what would be your strongest economic point in, uh, for governing generation? My strongest economic point, one, will be the available mineral resources in Google State, tourism. But you, as, educa a, former, as, edu a, education, as a former lawmaker, you education. know that that is in the exclusive reserve and on the, on the constitution. My brother, mineral resources found within my territory, we have comparative advantage. We do. When we do. private investors come, we do. The federal we do. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me over, tell, let me tell you this. Let me tell, let, let me tell you this. We will get partners. We will collaborate with, we'll collaborate with the federal government. We will not, it's not so much we're going to take over the responsibilities of the federal government or the responsibility of the Ministry of Mines and um, um, uh, Mines. Mines, yeah. No. But what I'm saying in essence is that. We, it's our states. We can encourage the exploration, exploitation, and marketing of mineral resources within our domain. If you were elected, if you are elected governor of Kogi State, what would you like to be remembered for? Or what would you like to be noted for? One, one I, will be, I will be happy to correct the disunity that this government, present government, have planted. To, before now, there was no Igala agenda in Kogi State. There was no Igbe agenda. There was no Okun agenda. Uh, Abubakar Audu became governor of Kogi State in 1999. Nobody preached Igala agenda. He preached APP. That was the party that brought him to power. Ibrahim Idris became the governor of Kogi State. It was all about heralding and preaching PDP. Idris, Wada became governor. We are preaching PDP. For the first time in our state, we have become so polarized. You now have Igala agenda. You have uh, Okun agenda. You have Mibira uh, agenda. My first responsibility would be to unite our people. And that is why the slogan of my campaign is One Kogi, One Destiny. After uniting our people, we are going to work on our economy. After working on our economy, we are going to work on education. As I speak with you today, apart from Ikiti State, we have the highest number of professors in this country. Yet, our universities are like glorified secondary schools. Today, there's no functional primary school in Kogi State, no teachers. Education is the bane of our development as a people. We're going to work on it. We're going to introduce ICT. We're going to work on the curriculum from primary school to our universities. We're going to work on agriculture. We're going to go into mechanized agriculture. We're going to go into plantation agriculture. We're going to have farmhouses. Understand? We're going to recruit our graduates into agriculture. Mining is going to be promoted by the grace of the Almighty God. We are going to do all this by the grace of God to make sure that Kogi State, our true potential, is revived. We have a place, one of the best plateaus in the world. It's called Mount Party. We are going to develop Mount Party with cable cars, with things that will attract global attention. People will be traveling to Lokoja for tourism. We are going to make sure that from 
where we call Natako down to um, the Murtala Mohammed Bridge. We're going to have boat clubs. We're going to invite international hotels, Marriott, Intercontinental, to come and build three-star, five-star hotels by the bank of our river. Our cobalt is not going to be there. We're going to approach the federal government to declare those places a free trade zone, give incentives, give tax holidays to make sure that investors will come and take over. And more importantly, I'm going to build a new Lokuja. Zealand was in existence before you had New Zealand. York was in existence before you had New York. You understand? So we are going to make sure that we build new Lokuja, just like Erufai did within four years in Abuja. He built four new districts. Build Taco, build Katampe, build Jahi. Build... We are going to build four new districts we are going to call New Lokoja. All because right. Lokoja is a colonial city. Lokoja is the former capital of this country. We have all the historical, historical antecedents mm -hmm. to build tourism right. in Kogi State. We need, to, and, we, need, we need to go, Senator. And I'd like to ask you, the last time, you said you are, your, your campaign is being powered. Uh, you were talking about the funding of your campaign. This time around, you've gotten some help from your friends? Or how, do you, how are you funding your campaign? Anointing oil. That's what you're using. Anointing oil. If you don't win this election, what would you do? I will win the election. What gives you the Because guarantee? the people of Kogi State have made it known and made it clear that I'm the candidate to beat. And we will not allow the APC to rig the election. We are going to defend this election. And I'm telling you today, nobody is interested in APC in Kogi State because percentage salaries have been paid. Right. There's poverty all over the place. No road, no water. Capital of Loko, um, Kogi State is Lokoja. Over one year, no water drop in the capital city. Senator, we need so to the go. people are completely disenchanted as they are disenfranchised and they are not I happy. Hope, I hope your certificate is, is intact. It has never been questioned. Really? It has never, Which one did you it has to, never been questioned. Which one did you submit to INEC? All my certificates were submitted. Or you just presented the uh, secondary school certificate? All my certificates were submitted, including your present school. <laughs> that, that is my alma mater, Bayes University. Thank you so much, Senator Dino Melaye. Thank you so much, and I wish you the very best in the election. Thank you.